just want to show you one thing. So this is the uh, MacBook Air M1, the cheapest one you can get. It supposedly has a 256 gig internal uh, drive, but if, as you can see, it's 245.11 uh, gigs as its capacity. It's available, if I can get this to focus, there we go. It's available is 212, but its uh, use space is 237, about 237. That's what the system takes takes up. And I'm gonna be installing uh, the Adobe Creative Cloud Suite because I'm a creative professional and that's the software that I use. So I wanna see how much it, space it takes up. Let's fast forward and uh, check it out. So here we have, I'm gonna install Photoshop, Illustrator, Oh, I don't even know, like um, Lightroom, InDesign, Premiere Pro, and After Effects. Those are the kind of main programs I use. If there's any more, and then I'll install it, but those are the core ones. I want to see how much space it takes up. And then uh, I'm going to take it a little further after that. So uh, let's get started. Start on Photoshop. What is going on here? It says here, you're on an Apple Silicon device. While we develop a new version of this app, you can still use the Intel base version on your device. Okay, so we're just gonna go. Let's uh, skip ahead. So as I wait here, I'm waiting for all of these to install. We're gonna see how much space this really takes up. Can't wait to see. Let's go. So here we go, the final result. So after installing all of the apps I use in Adobe Creative Cloud, you can see here, those are the primary ones that I use. The total comes out to 65 gigs used. So you can kind of see there, let's zoom in here. 65, let's see if I can get that in focus too. There we go. 65 gigs used out of 245 and 184 left. So I don't know about you, but it doesn't take up a lot of space, but at the same time, I fear that it's going to, I'm gonna run out of space real soon. Um, let me just switch views and uh, we can talk about this. So let's talk about this. Adobe Creative Cloud, or the suite that I use, which is uh, includes Photoshop, Illustrator, InDesign, Premiere, and After Effects, which also includes Media Encoder um, and Camera Raw. All of those programs take up about 28 gigs. That's 28 gigs added on to the already existing 30, you know, 30, um, you know, 30 some odd gigs from the OS. And so that leaves me with about 181 gigs left on the 256 gig internal drive. Now, let's make something clear. They advertise 256 gigs on the box and, uh, let me show you. Take a look at here. Oh, let's uh, cover that bad boy up. There. There, right there. 256. 256. And it only has uh, the capacity of 245. So there's like 10 gigs missing. Very odd. But at the same time, that's, it is what it is. It's Apple. This is what we expect. Will this be enough? I don't think so because even if I go ahead and just only use those applications that I already installed, Photoshop, Illustrator, InDesign, Premiere, and After Effects, it only leaves me with 181 gigs for storage. For all the other things like the files that I use, um, and that's just not enough. 
An option could be getting the Samsung T5 or T7 drive. It's a USB-C drive and it's fast, or I, I guess the T7 is the USB version, USB-C version. Um, it's fast, it's solid state, uh, and I could probably just work off of that. I've seen a lot of videos, and you have probably too, of people using it as uh, just a work drive. So that can free up space. At the same time, um, is it worth it going up to 512 gigs? When you purchase the, when you go and order the MacBook Air from Apple's website, you have an option to upgrade to 512 gigs of storage. Now, that is great, but it bumps it up. In Canada, you know, it bumps it up to 1649. The original MSRP is 1299. Um, and it just bumps it up to 1649 for the seven core, seven core GPU. Now, if you go to the eight core GPU version, you get 512 gigs of internal storage. And it's only 1699. So it makes more sense to go that way. For me, I don't think this is enough space, so I'll probably have to return this and look at my other options. I don't think the, I don't want to have to keep on plugging in, uh, you know, different drives and buying different drives. That's actually a better solution, I think. You know, as I'm kind of talking through it, I think it is a better solution. Um, but we'll see. I'm going to be throwing a lot of different things at this machine, and I'm going to, and I want to test what it can do, what it can handle, because the files that I use are extremely large. As a photographer that primarily only deals with commercial clients, all my files are fairly big because I need to keep those layers intact when I'm working on them so that when I go back or if clients have a revision, I can easily go back and make changes without actually having to redo everything. So with that being said, I'm going to throw a lot of tests at it, and I'm going to share that with you guys. So, like always, you know, thanks again for watching this video. If you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing. I'd love to get the numbers up on this channel and um, share with you more and more things that are coming up. If you have any comments, please leave it in the comments below because I'd like to hear from you. What do you think about the lowest-end MacBook Air M1? Like. Do you think it would fit your creative lifestyle? Do you think it would fit your workflow? Let me know. Um, and if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. So that's all I have to say. Until next time, again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.